Hey, what's going on guys? TBL here, and today we're bringing you a little bit of some Pokemon Go. That's right, something a little bit different. This game has absolutely been taking the world by storm, and it's really not that hard to see why. Pokemon Go is, of course, the newest augmented reality game, the very first really big mobile game offered up by Nintendo via Niantic Labs. And the simple premise of it is that it's a game that allows you to go out into the real world using your camera, using your phone's GPS, and catch Pokemon. And that's it. It's such a simple concept, but it is an absolutely amazing video gaming experience that has really kind of changed the world. Over the past couple of days, it has become the number one most popular mobile game in history. Bumping up Nintendo's share prices by nearly 25%, pulling in $7.5 billion and making a couple of million dollars every single day. This game is absolutely insane. But it is unfortunately not without its problems. The game does have a couple of issues that we are going to be talking about today. As a matter of fact, in today's video we're going to be talking about five changes that I feel Niantic Labs needs to make in order to further Pokemon Go's success and perhaps make it into the game we all know it truly can be. Now this game is already incredible and I've certainly been playing it quite a bit over the past few days, but these are just five things that really I feel are kind of holding the game down. Certainly five things that have uh, really been kind of aggravating for me as a player and I know for a lot of other players out there. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into things. Number one, I think Niantic needs to rethink and change the way this game handles more rural areas out there on the map. Now right now, Niantic is using the system that they used in one of their previous games, Ingress, and it populates an area with Pokemon based on how much cellular activity is going on in that area. So the more populated an area is, the more people there are with cell phones, the more activity, the more Poke stops, the more Pokemon gyms, and the more Pokemon you'll find in that given area. That's why people who live in like New York City or Los Angeles are having Poke stops literally all across the field, and they have Pokemon everywhere they can turn. But if you live in a more rural area, maybe if you're out there in Arkansas or in some farmlands, you'll notice that things are decidedly less populated with our little pocket monsters. I know personally in the area I live in, I have to travel about five miles before I hit my first really populated zone that has more than a, a single Pokestop. My nearest Pokestop to me is about a mile and a half away. And if I really want to get into an area where, uh, where I've got a couple of gyms and whatnot, I have to go about four to five miles before I run into any of that. And similarly, there's not a lot of Pokemon that I find in my general area. I really do have to make a trip in order to uh, be able to catch anything, which of course is the point of this game. This game wants you to get up, go outside, and play, and I am absolutely fine with that. I was walking a couple of miles the other day, just going around the local area. I went about six miles around just trying to find stuff, and I, 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 reached, uh, I reached a couple of those Poke Stops. But really, it took a long time before I could get anything. So this game really needs to show more sparsely populated areas a little bit more love. We need more Poke Stops in those zones. We need more gyms in those zones. And of course, we need more Pokemon. More Pokemon equals more players equals more fun. And that's the point of this game. This is an intensely social game. You will run into all kinds of other people out there in the world also playing Pokemon Go. And those of us in more rural areas need a little bit of that love too. Also, I think a small game UI change is in order. Right now, this game is kind of hard to make videos for and stream because of just how often it shows your location. Like when you're inspecting one of your Pokemon, at the very bottom it'll show you exactly where you caught that Pokemon. Which I think is cool, I think that option should still be in the game, but maybe it should be hidden behind a button or something so that those who are streaming don't have their, uh, their home location broadcast out into the world 24-7. But alright, let's move on to point number two. The battle system, gyms, training, etc. Right now, battles in my opinion are just far too simplistic and silly. Tapping the screen to dodge attacks and then to attack other Pokemon is really kind of clunky and unintuitive right now. Now, I definitely recognize that this game was made for the more casual mobile market, but for a Pokemon game, it doesn't really work too well. The game needs to have something better and more accurate to the classic feel of Pokemon than a click to swipe and dodge simulator that doesn't really work most of the time I try to use it. Now, do I think a more turn-based 
RPG-esque system that we have in the, the mainline Pokemon games is in order here? Maybe, maybe something like that. I don't really mind tapping to attack on this game, but it's just, it, it's been super inaccurate with uh, the way the servers are handled and whatnot. It makes it really hard to dodge attacks, so much so that I don't even bother dodging attacks anymore. I just spam attacks and then hold for my special attack. And that doesn't really capture the feel of Pokemon. So I definitely think a battle system change might be in order. Maybe implement, you know, we'll keep the two move system, but implement more of a turn-based battle system when you head to gyms. Also, I'd like to see a more training-focused side to the gyms that your team owns, so that you can battle there continuously for more items and more EXP. Overall, I think gyms just need to be more rewarding. Right now, if you're not like level 15 plus with 1000 CP and up Pokemon, don't bother going to gyms. The risk rewards you get for uh, for participating in gyms just aren't really worth it in my opinion. Now if you own a gym and nobody's coming to challenge you, yeah, you get great rewards every single day. But for people who are challenging gyms, you don't get a lot of EXP for, uh, for either beating a gym or beating Pokemon in a gym. I think that needs to be bumped up a bit. And personally, I think there needs to be an auto heal function uh, after training with a friendly gym. If you go and challenge a gym that the team that you're affiliated with owns, I don't think you should have to heal your Pokemon afterwards. I definitely think that should be an automated system so that you can use that gym as sort of a training spot. If you're on Team Mystic, you can see that blue gym say, okay, I'm going to go over there, send in some of my lower level Pokemon to train and fight, and then progressively make those Pokemon stronger. Maybe get some EXP for yourself and earn a couple of, a little bit of Stardust, maybe some candy or something. And of course, like I said, after those battles, I think your Pokemon should be auto-healed. It's not like meds are exactly sparse, well, if you live near Pokestops, but having to heal every single time after you battle a friendly gym, well, it's kind of frustrating. But those are the changes I feel would benefit the gym and battle system. Maybe also implementing a, a way to battle your friends. This game definitely needs a friend system of its own. I'd love to be able to add some of my friends and maybe have little training battles with them and whatnot. Alright, let's move on to point number three. The servers. Now, this one barely needs any mention at all. And it's honestly one issue that Niantic is no doubt working on. But it's pretty obvious that this game was completely unprepared for the massive volume of players that it got. Which, admittedly so, this game has a lot of people playing it right now. Servers have constantly been up and down, and people have lost both Pokemon and real-life money on this game. Myself included. Now, there are certain oddities like timed lucky eggs and incense items, both of which give you benefits in-game and are tied to in-game achievements and microtransactions. Lucky Eggs, of course, double your EXP gain for a short period of time, and Incense attracts nearby Pokémon to your location for about 30 minutes. Now, the timers for these are both in real time, meaning that if you get kicked off the servers, those timers don't stop counting down. You lose that time. And with how unreliable the servers have been thus far, that essentially means that players who buy these things with real-life money are paying for nothing. This is a big no-go. I would definitely recommend that any of you other trainers out there refrain from purchasing anything in the shop with real money until Niantic gets their server problem settled. There's nothing like buying a pack of incense, popping one, starting off the timer, getting kicked off the server, and then 28 minutes later getting back on to see that you only have two minutes left of that 30 minute item that you paid real money for. Not good. Number four, the transfer system. Now, personally, I don't have much of a problem with the catching, candy, and evolution system. I think it actually works fairly well and really incentivizes players to catch multiple Pokémon of a single type. However, what I do have a problem with is the game's transfer system. Transferring allows you to trade a Pokémon that you've caught in for a piece of candy relating to that Pokémon's type, which in turn will allow you to power up or evolve another Pokémon in that same tree. This system, for the most part, works. But I have one glaring issue in that evolved Pokemon transfer for the exact same amount of candy as their unevolved counterparts. This is dumb, plain and simple. It generally costs a huge amount of candy to evolve Pokemon, making them generally more powerful and more valuable. And this change should definitely be represented in the transfer system. If a Pidgey is worth one piece of candy from the Professor, well then a Pidgeotto should net you about five, and maybe a Pidgeot should net you between 10 to 15. The system right now simply does not reward you for fully leveling up Pokemon who you aren't planning to use in gyms. 
A much better strategy is simply to collect a ton of low-level Pidgeys, evolve them all into Pidgeotos, and transfer them away for the EXP and a massive loss to your candy reserves. You really have no incentive to work towards that Pidgeot. Increasing the amount of candy you get for evolved Pokémon would incentivize people towards actually evolving their stuff, which is the point of the game. And finally, number 5, a trading system. Now, admittedly, this one's more of a pipe dream, but I could absolutely see a trading system working in this game. Something akin to the Pokémon GTS in the mainline games would be a perfect feature for future changes in Pokémon GO. This game is all about collecting Pokémon in your general region, which can of course provide completely different Pokémon from the Pokémon in other regions. Trading seems like a natural progression for the way in which we share our Pokémon and encounter new ones. If you're like me and have friends in big cities who have rare Pokémon popping up all the time, it would be great if I could trade with them and maybe get some of that. And while that sort of system certainly seems far away, I would imagine Niantic is probably thinking about it, and hopefully we'll see something akin to that in the future. But there we go guys, those are my ideas for 5 changes that I really think could benefit Pokemon Go. Again, this game has become incredibly popular over the past few days. There are millions upon millions of people playing it, and I think if Niantic and Nintendo, well, and the Pokemon Company all play their cards right, they could have an absolute gold mine of a winner here. But alright, that's it for this video. Are you guys playing Pokemon Go? Be sure to let me know what you think of these changes, and let me know any changes that you would like to see down in the comment section below. But that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'm thinking about doing some more Pokemon Go videos on the channel here, if I can figure out some, uh, if I can figure a couple of things out, so look forward to that. But as always, I am the Black Link. You trainers, stay frosty out there.